may I call on our PSI, Philippine Sports Institute National Training Director, and the PSC Chief of Staff, and the Project Director of the National Sports Summit 2021. Can we all welcome Mr. Mark Edward Velasco. Sir, magandang hapon po. Good afternoon, uh, Joash. Good afternoon to our participants uh, in this 18th session of the National Sports Summit. Today, we will have uh, a very special guest. Uh, he's the Secretary General of TAFIXA, and uh, he will talk about the importance of our sports uh, heritage and how it can help us uh, use it to develop peace and development. Um, once again, good afternoon. Sit back, enjoy, and welcome to the National Sports Sun Summit 2021. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Mark Velasco. And uh, kasama po natin si Sir Mark. No? 18th session na po natin siyang kasama. And we're very thankful for his presence this afternoon. And last but definitely not the least, to deliver his inspirational message on behalf of the PSC Board. Let us all welcome our Oversight Commissioner for the Indigenous Peoples Games, PSC Commissioner Charles Raymond Maxi. Kung magandang hapon po sa inyo. Go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Joas. Uh, uh, when the, the present uh, PEC board uh, assumed office back in 2016, in July of 2016, uh, our focus uh, is centered on elite athletes and grassroots. And uh, in the grassroots uh, component, we included the uh, Indigenous Peoples Games as one of our programs. And as the marching orders of the chairman uh, to do the IP Games, uh, I was tasked to, to implement this program. Uh, this is in consonant with, uh, with our mantra, which is uh, sports for all, uh, to bring uh, sports to the community. So we started with the IP Games back in uh, 2018. Uh, we had uh, four legs and then in 2019, meron kaming isa uh, in Palawan. Uh, why I'm saying this is because it's really important to, to, to go back to our roots and to, of course, uh, to know how the rich culture of our indigenous peoples and their tradition uh, play. You know, they also have games and these games uh, it's not, are not actually just games, but they're this is just uh, this. This is their way of life. So we went around uh, the country, and it was, admittedly, uh, for my part, it was a learning experience for me, uh, knowing a different indigenous peoples community, and then uh, uh, interacting with them, with the tribal leaders, and the of course uh, the participants, and then uh, pandemic struck. So. All our sports activities uh, were halted and uh, uh, nagkaroon ng stoppage, but uh, it does not stop us from uh, coming up or from continuing with our program so that our indigenous peoples will be highlighted and then the rich and culture tra tradition of these uh, IPs uh, will be known to everyone. So we came up, the Philippine Sports Commission came up with the uh, this uh, platform via Zoom online platform of uh, programs like this one, the, the National Sports Summit. And then we have, the, of, of course, also from uh, Commissioner Silvia's uh, Women's in, in Sports. So today, we, I, I am, uh, I am uh, happy that uh, one, this topic, uh, which is close to my heart, uh, which is uh, the indigenous peoples and the games. And uh, I'm happy to be here, to be talking to you. Uh, I'm sure participants, kayong mga participants would like to know uh, the rich, uh, the, the rich uh, culture and tradition of indigenous peoples and their games. We have a top, top notch speaker, uh, a distinguished uh, uh, individual in the person of uh, Professor Henry Daot, who will be later talking to you or discussing to you or presenting his, uh, his thoughts, his, his, uh, making his presentation for the for our participants. So I hope uh, each one of you will learn something out of this afternoon's activity. Uh, sit down and relax uh, and participate. Uh, at the end of the day, 
uh, you will be having an added knowledge on the importance of our indigenous peoples through their games. Thank you and good afternoon. Maraming maraming salamat po to our uh, PSC Commissioner uh, Charles Maxi who also oversights no ulitin ko po ang, ang PSC Indigenous Peoples Games and later ng ating pong guest speaker would uh, delve into that and to more on uh, syempre uh, on our topic para po ngayong hapon na ito as thank you commissioner and uh, today's session is one of the many lectures that we'll be having for the first phase of the National Sports Summit As said earlier, sports conversations will be presided over uh, by recognized figures from the local to the international sports scene to deliver short lectures in the online conferencing format. And afterwards, an open forum will be facilitated to gather insights and views as a synthesis for every session. Ang atin pong topic for this afternoon will focus on the sports and games of the indigenous peoples as a significant part of the history reflecting who and what they are. They're a part of a cultural significant, cultural heritage of a group of people handed down from generation to generation. Indigenous sports and games are more than just physical activities for fun and participation, but are traditional activities for cultural expression and mutual comprehension. ISG are more than just the physical, mental, emotional, and social, social and spiritual development of individuals, but more significantly, a means to convey unity and diversity, cultural awareness, and identity. This topic will look into providing greater opportunities for indigenous peoples to participate and develop. Accessibility, opportunity, support, facilities, equipment, programs, training, Talent identification and talent development are the many and the many issues and concerns that needs to be addressed to make sports, participation, and development an inclusive program for the IPs in the country. Ang ating pong guest speaker for this afternoon is a former dean of the College of Sports, Physical Education, and Recreation sa Mindanao State University main campus. Yan po ay sa Marabi City. Hello sa ating mga participants who are from the MSU Marabi campus. Thank you po. And uh, he's also a visiting professor at the University of Suwon, South Korea from 2013 to 2015. He's a Master of Science in Leadership and Management in Sports and Sports Psychology at the University of Oregon in the United States and also a Fulbright Scholar at the UO International Scholar and International Cultural Service Program Scholar. He is, as a, he is as a Tafisa Certified Leadership in Sports for All lecturer or resource speaker and also a founder of a few uh, projects, namely Project Hope Through Sports, Smart ID, the PET program, the C-Spear on Wheels, Kids in Shape. He is also an international speaker, a researcher, an author, a physical educator, a coach, a multi-sport awardee and sports missionary. He also uh, finished some books. Uh, the, uh, he authored books, uh, namely Random Thoughts and others from 2000 to 2002. He is the co-author of Easily Understandable and Applicable Recreation Handbook for Youth in, in partnership with the Korean Institute of Sports and UNESCO in 2014. And he is the current dean for the Philippine Sports Institute the Philippine Sports Commission, and a consultant for the PSC's Indigenous Peoples Games. Can we all welcome, uh, with warm greetings, ang atin pong uh, guest speaker for this afternoon. Co coming back from our batch one, let us all welcome Professor Henry Cordero Daut. Prof, magandang hapon po yeah, sa inyo. Uh, magandang hapon sa lahat. And I would like to express my thanks and appreciation for the invitation to... Uh, share my knowledge in indigenous people's games and I would like to acknowledge the presence of Sir Mark Velasco and Com Charles Maxi, the stalwarts of Philippine Sports Commission and its programs. And of course, I would like to thank the PSC for the opportunity to be able to serve Philippine sports. Uh, I hope I, my connection will not falter Uh, rain is starting to fall in our area and hopefully 
I pray that uh, I will be able to finish my presentation before the downpour will really cause some problems. So uh, my presentation is more on sports and our indigenous people. We are not going to talk about the games that they will play, but we will be talking about how indigenous peoples are included in the sports development program of our country. So I'd like to share my screen with you. My topic is our indigenous sports and our indigenous people towards a more inclusive sports development in the Philippines. We all know that uh, part of what we are enjoying in the modern sports actually originated from the indigenous sports and games of our ancestors. And likewise, within our blood flows some part coming from our cultural heritage. And today, I'd like to honor them by giving importance as to the value of the indigenous people in sports development, not only in the Philippines, but also in the world. So I would like to discuss with you the following, uh, the introduction of the indigenous people of the Philippines, the sports and games of the indigenous peoples, the programs of the PSC through the indigenous peoples games initiative under Commissioner Charles Maxey. And we will be discussing sports development indigenous peoples as we would like everyone to be part of the sports inclusivity so that everyone have the opportunity to participate and enjoy in the benefits of sports and to start with i would like to make a definition of what indigenous peoples are and according to wikipedia they are the first peoples first nations aboriginal peoples native peoples and in the philippines we have the term lumans uh, also, they are ethnic groups who are native to a particular place on earth, and they live or live in an interconnected relationship with the natural environment for many generations prior to the arrival of non-indigenous peoples or colonizers. So we all know that within our region, uh, we have indigenous people living either in the following. Uh, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And the UND report says that there are 14 to 17 million indigenous peoples in the Philippines, and there are 110 ethno-linguistic groups, mostly concentrated in northern Luzon, particularly in the Cordilleras and in Mindanao. And some groups are in the Visayas area like Panay and Negros Islands. So we are actually a, a country that is so diverse, not only in terms of the uh, cultural diversity we have, but also in terms of the different practices that its culture present to us. And some of the major indigenous peoples in the Philippines found in Luzon, like the Igorot, the Botok, the Ifugao, Kalinga, Ibaloy, Sagada, among others, and from the Visayas, we have Iskaya, Negreto, Negritos, Solodnon, and Mindanao, you have Laan, Bagobo, Mandaya, Samal, Bajau, Luma, Tiboli, and Higaunon. So these are just some of the more popular indigenous people in the country. And we should acknowledge that their presence enriches not only our culture, but our society. So we could always find this indigenous people in the mountains, uh, in the lowlands, and sometimes in the seas. So uh, in the mountain province, most of the indigenous peoples there are located in the Cordillera, the mountains of Cordillera. Uh, in Zambales, you have the Aetas there. And of course, in Mindanao, we have the different cultural groups from Tiboli to Blaan to Manobo to uh, Higaunon. And of course, we have the sea gypsies or the Samals in the Sulu Islands. And the means of livelihood are farming, hunting, and fishing. And we are really trying to identify how government can help our IPs, considering that they are the less privileged group of people in our country and economically they are marginalized as well as in terms of their means of livelihood. 
So IPs are known for their rites and rituals. So most often they have rituals for the blessing of the land before planting, after harvest, and even rituals to drive away evils to protect the community or the people. And they are known for their colorful costumes and its cultural group presents a unique cultural attire and practices that are identified to their respective heritage. So we have the Muslims of Mindanao, we have the Aitas of Zambales, the Igorots of Cordillera, and of course the Tibulis uh, of South Cotabato as examples. Now let's take a look on what is the status of the indigenous peoples in the Philippines. And uh, according to the United Nations uh, report, the IPs, not only in the Philippines, but around the world, are among the poorest and most disadvantaged peoples, one third of the world's poorest people actually. So we, we know that uh, IPs around the world are the most disadvantaged. That means they have uh, less uh, opportunity for economic development and as well as other areas. Second, they suffer disproportionately in areas like health, education, human rights, and regularly face systemic discrimination and exclusion. And this is common not only in other countries and the Philippines. And we are actually experiencing it in our area when we see the IPs uh, lacking in health uh, services, lacking in educational uh, programs, and most likely they are always victims of human rights violation as reported in many uh, uh, media outlets. They often face exclusion, loss of ancestral uh, lands, and of course domains, uh, displacement pressures, uh, destruction of traditional ways of life and practices, and the recent development in terms of encroachment into their ancestral lands cost them uh, their identity and therefore they are more likely to uh, have some problems with security and uh, conflict. The IPs also have been subject to the historical discrimination and marginalization from political processes and economic benefit. We all know that not many uh, leaders are coming from the IPs. And we need to ensure that equal, equal opportunity for economic development, political uh, exercise should be given to these IP people because they are part of society and our people. Next, we have social and political discontent resulting into armed conflicts. Uh, these are evident, especially here in Mindanao and uh, other areas where there are political uh, problems in terms of uh, the desire of our ancestral uh, communities to exercise their rights over their lands and conflicts such as this threatens their stability and therefore affect their development. So it is a very sad uh, reality that IPs in the Philippines, although there are laws that were passed, still needs a lot of help in terms of making sure that we provide equal opportunity for them to be developed. Okay, so Republic Act 8371, also known as the Indigenous Peoples Rights Act of 1997, recognized the right of IPs to manage their ancestral domains and has become the cornerstone of current national policies on IPs. With the passing of this act, the IP lands are now being protected. Ancestral domains are given security in terms of encroachment from non-indigenous people. And this allows our IP communities to have management and supervision of their uh, ancestral domains. So how about sports and gains of our indigenous peoples? Beyond the, the culture, the tradition, the arts, the music, the dances, are the rich cultural heritage passed on from generation to generation through the sports and games. 
and IP games in the purest sense. They are the games and movements that are traditional to our cultures from their dances to the ball games and water sports. So hunting, fishing, uh, spear throwing, archery, uh, using indigenous materials form part of the cultural tradition that is attached to how they move and how they live. And the I ISG or the, in the indigenous sports and games form a significant part of our history and make us and our variety of cultures what and who we are today. So we are identified by the kind of activities that our ancestors performed during their time. And these are preserved in terms of being handed from generation to generation. The games of the Ifugaos, when during harvest, they perform certain activities, the tug of war in the water to settle disputes among others. These are actually part of the cultural practices that our indigenous peoples are uh, exercising. And sports and games of our indigenous people are part of a cultural heritage of a group of people handed down from generation to generation. However, there is a big problem in terms of the possibility of being extinct as a result of modernization. So IP games, though it is rich in terms of cultural uh, practices and diversity in terms of differences among cultures, it is being threatened by many factors. Okay, so we would like to know that ISG or the indigenous sports and games are significant not only to the indigenous people, but to us Filipinos and our country in general. ISG is more than just an opportunity for social and community interaction, but a means to transcend cultural, political, and social boundaries to promote peace, unity, harmony between and among peoples. So ISG is used not only as part of a community celebration, but it is also a way of promoting unity and harmony between people. So we make use of sports as a vehicle for peace building. ISG is similarly practiced and gains this significance in the IP communities. ISG goes beyond the development of the whole person to the promotion of cultural identity and the rich cultural heritage of a people and nation. So when we participate in indigenous sports and games, we are not only promoting uh, the physical development, the health, the fitness, uh, and other components or benefits that we gain from participation, but it also promotes our cultural identity. When you wear the cultural attire while playing, you're actually promoting and preserving the rich cultural heritage of your people. Third, it is more than just a physical activity for fun and participation, but more importantly, a traditional activity for cultural expression and mutual comprehension. With the advent of modern technology, the modernization, we see less and less youth and people participating in ISD and wearing the traditional costumes. This is because uh, there is a tendency to favor more on what is new and what is modern. And when we participate in ISG, it goes beyond the fun and participation that we benefit. It is more of preserving a traditional activity and providing awareness and understanding to people who are not familiar with the cultural practices or activities that we have. And finally, Indigenous sports and games are more than just the physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual development of the individual, but more significantly a means to convey unity in diversity, cultural awareness, and identity. So when we participate in the indigenous sports and games, which I know many of us may not be familiar, we actually promote not only the physical development, whether it, it's mental, uh, social, and spiritual, but we promote unity in the midst of diversity. 
there are differences in the way some IP games are played, although they are similar in terms of the characteristics. So in that way, we promote unity in diversity, cultural awareness that even we have differences, we can find similar similarities in terms of sports and games that our ancestors have played. So we need to understand that ISGs in our country are significant in transforming our society into an inclusive, participative, and appreciative of the culture and tradition of our IP people. So these are examples of the IP uh, sports and games from the Tibolis. You have the archery, the Sumpit, the Manobo. These are from the Manobo tribes. And of course, from the mountain province, you have the wrestling, you have the race, log racing, you have the hay, uh, rice uh, racing, where in after harvest, they make it as part of their activity to celebrate golden harvest by participating in a race, carrying a certain number of bundles and make it as a fun uh, game for the people. And of course, we are also included and they have also uh, IP games specific for the women. And these are examples of some traditional sports and games that we may think only happen in one culture, but in these cases, in the process of our going around, we found out that there are similar traditional sports and games that different cultures actually perform. So we have Arnis as our national sports, and this has now become an international uh, sport uh, included in the SEA Games, where we are the general champion. We won most of the medals, and as expected, because we are actually the one holding this. And hopefully, if this is being practiced in many countries around the world, it can be included in the Olympics as part of the martial arts. So. With the uh, uh, passing of the Philippine Indigenous Games Preservation Act of 2017, the National Commission for Culture and Arts, as well as the Department of Education, were tasked to take the initiative in preserving and promoting indigenous games in the country to ensure that future generations of Filipinos can still enjoy them. So this is a landmark uh, law that will really promote, preserve, and propagate the IP games or the indigenous games. Uh, it will require the Department of Education to include traditional sports and games or IP games in the curriculum or activities in the school. And uh, with the passing of this act, it will assure the continuity of practices handed down from generation to generation. So what are the threats to the indigenous sports and games, not only in the Philippines, but around the world? First is the globalization. The, the, the world today is made closer because of the technology and more of the activities are being globalized in a way that there is a change from what is traditional to become modern. And of course, modernization will require some changes in the way games are played. And that means there will be standardization of the rules. There will be changes on how it is scored. That will actually uh, change the picture of how authentic as a, a traditional sports and games could be. So next is the popularity of professional sports and events that attracts more people to watch because of its uh, excitement. And the PBA, the NBA, the football, among others, are actually drawing more people, more kids away from participating in their traditional sports and games and indulge in watching professional or modern sports. And really the advent of computer games, video games, and e-games tremendously affected the popularity of traditional sports and games and actually draw more kids, even the kids from the IP communities to watching and playing video games and e-games. And of course, because the modern sports usually focus on competition and the excitement that it brings, 
traditional sports and games, which is more into fun and participation, is getting less attention. And finally, the focus on modern sports, particularly in the activities that are being played or uh, offered in the communities, in the schools, has lessen the interest and participation of many IP people and many of our countrymen from doing ISG to playing modern sports. So this contributed to the decline of the indigenous sports and games that it is becoming a source of uh, extinction that we need to stop. Okay, so these are the threats to the IP sports and games that we need to address. Okay, so how do we address this and protect our IP games? So I presented here the three Ps of ISG protection. One, preservation. Two, promotion. Three, propagation. These three represents the areas wherein we can help not only the IP people, communities, but we in the mainstream so that we can help preserve the rich cultural heritage, promote and propagate for greater participation. So when we talk about preservation, there is a need to document and research and we encourage university researchers, physical educators to go into research in this field of uh, IP games. We need to collect equipment and materials so that we have a basis of presenting and reproducing the correct exact equipment and materials necessary for its traditional sport and games and we need for its local government to establish at least a tsd center or museum so that children can visit and learn it can be a source of reference so that we can serve and make sure that the games of our, the past, the games of our ancestors are taken care of and can be learned by future generations. So once we do these activities, the next step is to promote. And when we promote, we need to partner with media. Media is a very strong force in terms of promoting activities, not only the modern sports, but also indigenous sports and games. We need to encourage more uh, media people, the TV, the newspaper uh, journalists to cover activities related to ISD and highlight in their presentation or come up with a program that will focus on ISD. We need to encourage more festivals of games as part of the celebration. And we know that during fiestas, in some cases, we offer uh, games and sports of the traditional uh, activities of our IPs. We need to have more people to write articles, make videos, or develop the IP games into apps so that the younger generation who are too attracted with the, the technology can access and actually learn and participate. And of course, vital to the promotion of the IP games here are the schools, the communities, and the families. The schools, I think, with the Department of Education has incorporated traditional sports and games, but I see it as more of the uh, games that are common, not only in the Philippines, but other countries. We need also to include the authentic traditional sports and games of our ancestors beyond the sacres, beyond the kadang kadang, beyond the palo sebo, are the more authentic traditional sports and games of our ancestors. Communities, LGUs, has to take active role in promoting uh, IP games. And of course, within our families, during our recreational activities, our free time, we can help our kids appreciate and learn about the games of the past, games of our ancestors, by introducing some form of traditional sports and games. So the third, which is propagation, is to ensure the inclusion of traditional sports and games in the school physical education. Uh, this is a very important component of propagating because it also addresses the health, the physical fitness that is common 
in terms of using the modern sports and traditional sports and games not only promote the physical component, but the cultural aspect as well. We should include TSG in school sports programs. Uh, at MSU, in one of the intramurals we had, we incorporated some of the traditional sports and games to those who are not involved in the modern sports activities. So it was a success. A lot of students feel that uh, this is a very good addition so that more and more students can participate not only for the modern sports that we offer, but also in the traditional sports and games. We need to have cultural exchange between communities and countries. So there's a need to ensure that uh, exchange of sports and games practices are held not only between regions or cultures, but within the country. Hopefully, the Philippine Sports Commission can come up with a regional sport and games or indigenous people's games competition or demonstration, and then we can come up with a national indigenous people's games where everyone can showcase the rich cultural tradition their ancestors through sports and games and of course there's a need to write handbooks on tsg manuals encyclopedia as for part of a reference we need to come up with handbooks so that we can develop more uh leaders to transfer the knowledge and skills about our traditional sports and games and we can do this through the higher education the department of education through research through articles and through uh write-ups that will highlight the traditional sports and games and of course like what we are doing today we have conferences webinars seminars summits that will tackle sports and games of our indigenous people so given all these opportunities i think each one of us can actually contribute in terms of preserving promoting and propagating the rich cultural heritage of our ancestors so what are the actions that we can take first we need to help strengthen laws and policies that will preserve protect promote and propagate indigenous sports and games in our communities and the country. While we have the IPRA law, it needs to be supported by uh, policies and guidelines down to the local government so that the law will have a strong implementation. We cannot just rely on one agency, the NCEA or the National Commission of Indigenous People to do the work. The local government can assist because it is where the IP communities are located. Second, we need to enhance capacity building for indigenous sports and games for teaching and learning in the schools and communities. While we have physical educators who are experts in teaching the fundamentals of basketball, volleyball, softball, we need also to develop human resource who can lead teach and transfer knowledge and skills of the indigenous sports and games. So we need to make sure that we have teachers, we have leaders who are trained to develop themselves to become facilitators of the transfer of skills of the indigenous sports and games of our ancestors. Next. We need to develop a system of research, documentation, retrieval, and preservation of the rich cultural heritage of our ancestors. I hope that the universities, the schools, or the DepEd, the DOST can offer research grants that will specifically focus on indigenous people's games. Uh, most of the researches are in other areas, and not much is given attention to the research on IP games. Next, we need to encourage governments to provide adequate funding support for the preservation and propagation of ISG in the country. And I hope there will be a lobby group who can uh, support um, our, our lawmakers, senators, uh, congressmen, governors, so that they can appropriate funds for specific areas or specific communities for their uh, ISD development. 
And finally, we need to inspire and encourage our children and the youth to actively participate, be aware of their cultural heritage and appreciate its significance so that they will be able to take pride in their cultural identity. So our problem is more on participation. How can we attract more kids to play traditional sports and games? And this is a challenge, not only to the family, not only to the community, but also to the schools. Okay, so what is PSC doing in terms of the preservation, promotion, and propagation? With the leadership of Commissioner Charles Maxi, under the support of PSE Chairman Ramirez and the commissioners, the IP Games was launched in 2018. And we had a series of uh, IP Games in various parts of the country, particularly in Luzon and in Mindanao. And in this program, we have IP Games demonstration where the sports and games of each culture are presented and demonstrated and audience or part, uh, observers can participate to learn. Second, there is a documentation process wherein its traditional sports and games is properly documented as to the title, the origin, the objective, the rules, and the methodology of playing as well as the scoring. So we are now actually gathering uh, data in terms of providing information on the description of its traditional games so that we can combine it together to form a manual, a handbook or encyclopedia so that it becomes a rich reference for our schools, our communities and other interested uh, individuals. Then we have photo contest. Uh, there are photographers or individuals who have uh, interest in photography join in taking pictures of the activities going on during the games and it is uh, being displayed and winners are chosen and become part of the future copybook table on IP games. And of course, there is that competition because it enhances interest, fun, and enjoyment when there is competition. And finally, there is the IP Games Forum where community members, uh, local government units, schools are invited to listen to speakers in terms of how we can promote, preserve, and propagate the IP Games of our uh, people. So this is how PSC conduct its IP Games and hopefully with the uh, end of uh, this pandemic, we can go back and come up with a more intensive IP games, not only in some areas, but in the whole islands of the Philippines. So these are the competition that we have, the tag of war, the race, the kadang kadang, the uh, making of rice the wrestling in the Banawi and Bontok province. Of course, here we have examples of demonstration wherein they demonstrate spear throwing. Uh, this is some pit and of course the archery. And of course, we have the IP Games Forum uh, participated by LGUs and uh, coaches and teachers and photo contest. And of course, uh, when we talk about IP Games, we're not talking only on the games of the people. When we talk of sports development, we talk of how we can include the indigenous people back into the mainstream so that they too will have the opportunity to be uh, included in the development of sports in the country. So here, the next part is sports development in the and the indigenous peoples, finding diamonds in the rough, and hidden in the jungles, mountains, and seas of our islands are sports talents waiting to be discovered. Buried beneath the rocks of the mountains are golds and diamonds waiting to be uncovered. Precious metals are tucked in the bottom of the seas waiting to be plucked. So these are actually statements that reflect the rich possibility that our IP gains can translate into the modern sports possibilities of our IP people. Uh, if we can only harness the bajaus 
bring them to the swimming pool and train them the fundamentals of correct execution. We don't need to have uh, kids who are afraid to swim start learning. They are already uh, attuned with the waters. We just need to transform them. Maybe the NSA in swimming can come up with a swim for food program. Bring the, the kids diving for uh, money at the ports, bring them into the swimming pool and in exchange for food for their families and train them. Or maybe those who are diving in the ports, come up with a talent of uh, developing them. Or maybe those in the mountains can come up with a program that will attract them to apply their running skills. The question is, are we providing these opportunities for the IPP? So it is a sad reality that while we try to search for talents among the kids in the urban, we forgot that there are kids out there in the mountains and in the beaches or in the seas who already possess certain talents that can run faster, that can swim faster, just like the Africans, okay? So, are we doing enough to make sports accessible to our IPs? I'm not sure. Maybe we can ask each NSA, what are they doing in terms of inclusivity of IP youth in terms of talent identification? Are we providing enough support in terms of opportunity, facility, program, and talent identification and development to the underprivileged members of our society? So when we talk about inclusivity, we talk about everybody, every Juan and Maria, gaining access to opportunities for sports development. In the Philippines, can we say that IPs are given this equal opportunity to be identified, selected, trained, developed, to become champions in sport as well as in life. I remember my good friend, uh, Giovanni Golanes, they have developed a program that will train the IPs of Talakogon in Davao del Norte. They have uh, identified a very good runner and they develop them into an excellent athlete. But how many of our regional uh, directors can show that there are programs that they have developed to also include the IP people? Okay, so the status of sports participation and development among the IPs in the Philippines, as I have observed, is one, we have problems with the environment. The environment sometimes is not welcoming to IPs. Uh, there is a need to have inclusive and free discrimination environment. Sometimes the fear of being rejected is high, especially among the IPs. So we need to establish in our sports programs community, we need to establish a safe, welcoming, inclusive, and free of discrimination among our IP people. Second, accessibility. Our facilities, equipment, training, and identification of talents are not as accessible to the communities in the city or in the municipality compared to those in the mountains or the ocean. Third, we have problems with opportunity. Opportunity for participation, for scholarships, for education, for coaching and training. Next, support. Funding and technical expert. I don't think many coaches would like to go to the mountains to conduct clinics. Uh, I think we need to make sure that our uh, coaches, our technical experts will have the passion and the commitment to go beyond the comforts of the well-developed facilities and go to the mountains or the, the ocean to transfer their knowledge and skills. And we need to support them with funding. And of course, facilities and equipment, uh, programs, the schools, do they have opportunity for IPs to excel in sports, the LGUs, the NSAs, and the PSC? And of course, talent identification. 
it goes to show that the schools should have some programs that will attract more IP people or IP youth to join, to uh, train, and to be developed. And that is true to LGUs, NSAs, and PSEs. And of course, similarly, talent development. How many IPs do we have in the national teams? Uh, I asked uh, the NSA if part of their profile include the identification of ethnicity among athletes so that we will have a data on how many athletes in the national teams are coming from ethnic tribes or ethnic groups. In that way, we can support that the Philippines is actually giving equal opportunity and access to sports development. Okay, so here we can have an example in the cities or urban areas, you have well-developed facilities, while those in the IP communities, it's more on the raw, the, uh, the place where they are playing. For swimming, they have the rivers. For the gym, uh, for the gym. So you have the differences in terms of the opportunities as well as facilities and equipment uh, given or provided for the IPs and their communities outside of the IP uh, areas. Okay, so this is an example that we have done. This is Project Hope. Help Project Hope means helping overcome physical activity exclusion. And this is in the mountains of Talaingod. We have Coach Mark Kaburian. Uh, we provided uh, physical and sports activities, especially uh, soccer. And this is part of the donation of the Philippine Sports Commission and the football, for, uh, football program from Hong Kong. So here the opportunity is actually very, very big in terms of uh, kids, if introduced, will have also this chance to develop. So if you notice, uh, the kids are really hungry for sports activities beyond their traditional sports activities. They also wanted to participate in the development of the modern sports where they can also excel. So uh, the question is, are we able to reach the farthest from uh, our areas to reach these mountains in order to promote sports development? Okay. So the challenges and opportunities for us is let us provide appropriate sports facilities in the IP community and IP schools. It does not have to be that advanced, that modern, as long as there is a place for them to participate and play sports. We need to provide adequate sports equipment for training and competition. And I thank very much Chairman Ramirez and other commissioners for supporting the program in donating sports equipment that we use for our training and clinic and donate to them so that they can continue playing. We need to conduct sports trainings, clinics, seminars among IPs. Uh, most likely those who are participating in sports clinic in the municipalities and cities are the regular uh, kids in the uh, community, but IPs more likely they will not be participating because of a fear of rejection, exclusion among others. We need to provide access and equal opportunity for IPs to participate in sports activities and competition. So we need to open the program for them to come and participate either in the community, local community, or maybe in the regional and the national. Next, we need to provide funding support because without funding, not much can be done. Next, establish programs for capability building in coaching and training that means there are kids, there are students in the universities who belong to the IP communities. We need to tap them. We need to bring them in as part of the human resource that can return to their communities and transfer knowledge and skills. And of course, I would like to provide an, a proposal to establish a national indigenous talent identification program to give equal opportunity for the IP youth to be identified, selected, trained, developed to become champions in sport, not just in the IP sports that they know, 
but in the modern sports that we are actually developing. And of course, we have to be a welcoming and inclusive in terms of the programs that we will be offering. Okay, so this is my proposal, a National Indigenous Talent Identification Program. It is a similar program that we started at uh, PSI, the Smart ID Program. NITIP is a program designed to provide opportunity for indigenous youths to be identified, selected, trained, and developed in sports to excel and become champions not only in sport but in life. It is a system of identifying kids with specific skills, personal qualities, and physical attributes that may lead that individual to become a high-performance athlete. It may include assessing the emotional performance like interest, determination, motivation, resilience, among others, while this may be difficult to assess during talent identification. But uh, it is important that we give an opportunity for a certain group of our population, a certain group that is uh, underprivileged, that is commonly deprived of opportunities so that they have access to sports development and talent identification. So who are the beneficiaries? So the target beneficiaries are members of the IP people in the Philippines, and they must be a member of or descent. They must be endorsed by their school, local government, or tribal head. It is open to both boys and girls, 13 to 16 years old. This is just a proposal. And they must be a resident of the area and community. So given this opportunity, its local government can actually offer this program so that those who are interested from among the IPs can gain access so that they can be identified. So how it is implemented? So this follows the process of talent identification that uh, PSI is conducting. They will, they will undergo a battery of tests. Uh, the result of the test will be analyzed to determine possible sports where they are considered potential. And those who will show potential in certain sports will be selected. Okay? The selected athletes will be introduced to sports they are considered with potential based on the data or performance. They will be given fundamental skills, trained, and also they will be provided with support in terms of equipment, uniform, among others. Okay, so if these kids showed good performance as a result of the training and further testing, they shall become part of the pool of talents in that certain region or area that can be given scholarship to further their training and education. And this is where the National Academy of Sports will be very beneficial if there will be regional NAS, okay? So here we can identify centers from the region where they will be provided with a training. That means expert coaches from the NSAs can be sent to provide training and development of these IPs. So this is an example of the pathway. This is a uh develop for the smart id you have the mass based sports that means we promote for all so that they will participate and engage in sport then from there we will test them talent identification battery of test will be conducted and from the data they will be selected based on the standards for example in athletics what are the components of skills and physical abilities that we are looking Based on the result, we can identify who are high performer in these areas and they can be selected and be brought to a sports camp for talent development. And they further will be trained. And then if they showed improvement, they can become part of the talent reserve and they go to the national youth team and the elite. So this is a pathway that we want them to follow from grassroots to greatness, from playground to podium. And of course, uh, who will implement this? Maybe PSC can implement this program as part of its grassroots sports development in partnership with POC, NSAs, NCCA, NCIP, LGU, and DepEd, and even CHED. Okay, so we have experts from the MSAS who can provide 
the uh, staff to uh, identify, to test, and we have been training the LGU and DepEd physical educators in the talent ID uh, testing. So this is very timely. And the data actually that we will receive can be placed in apps that will determine where individuals will be potential in sports. So you have data monitoring apps, iSports, sports maths, the talent identification and development system, the Kronos talent system. These are available in terms of uh, study analysis of where talents can be identified. So maybe the PSC or the DepEd or NSAs can uh, purchase some of this program and apply this in their talent search. Okay. So what are the challenges that we are facing? today okay so the challenge is for all this institution organization to work together in terms of inclusivity of sports development particularly the ipg people okay so here i have classified uh, the need for a unified indigenous sports development program I know there are development program, talent identification program of the NSAs, of the CHED, of the, I, the DepEd, and the PSE, but there is a need for us to consider that we need to come up with a unified sports development program for IP specific for them so that is until such time that they become comfortable or they become, uh, what's this, free to gain access to the general uh, talent development of our uh, PSC at present. So listed here are all agencies to come up with a unified grassroots sports program for the IPs. For the continuing preservation, promotion, and propagation of ISG, we need all of them to take part, and PSC is doing its part in terms of the IP games. I think the POC is also having programs for indigenous people's games. The Department of Education is also uh, incorporating in their curriculum uh, traditional sports and games. The CHED, I think many programs in the tertiary, especially in physical education, include indigenous people's games. And DILG that uses the games, culture, arts, and dances as parts of their celebration can also support in terms of the preservation, promotion, and propagation. There is a need or challenge for stronger policies and laws to protect, preserve, and propagate ISG, which means that the ILG should be active in terms of policy development in relation to ISG. NCIP should come up with proposals to strengthen the policies and laws as well as the NCAA. And finally, we need to intensify our research and documentation activities on ISG and that will uh, require the participation of the PSC, the research department, the Department of Education, the Commission on Higher Education, and in partnership with NCIP and NCEA, so that the research component of the development of ISG in the Philippines is really strengthened and enhanced. So given all these challenges, we need to come up really with a common mission and vision of helping our ISG be incorporated into the mainstream sports development of our country. And hopefully PSC is doing its job in uh, highlighting the value, significance of traditional sports and games through its indigenous people's games. Uh, we look forward that this organization's institution will come up together and sit down, plan, and craft a unified indigenous sports development program for our IPs. Finally, we believe that sports has the power to change the world according to Nelson Mandela. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. 
It speaks to youth in a language they understand. Sport can create hope where once there was only despair. And sports, according to Chairman Ramirez, is an instrument for peace building, for unity, for development. And we need to take advantage not only of the modern sports that we know, but also include the indigenous people, sports and games, because they too are part of the cultural heritage that we now celebrate. Okay, So our indigenous peoples have long suffered from neglect and discrimination. It is about time they are given opportunity to make significant difference in their lives and the world through sports. We owe them for who and what we are today. Thank you very much for listening. Mr. Joe. Maraming maraming salamat po uh, to our uh, guest speaker for this afternoon. Again, very, very uh, sobrang concise, no? very, very fruitful. A lecture from our guest speaker, Professor Henry Daoud. And we will now take this time uh, to give a very, very short recap on, uh, on Prof. Henry's lecture and to give us the session synthesis for this afternoon. I'm presenting our moderator for this session, Ms. Ariane Maliare. Ariane, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Joash, for that introduction. And of course, thank you so much, Professor Henry Daoud, for that, uh, for delivering a very informative and well thought out lecture on sports and our indigenous peoples. So a more inclusive development in the Philippines. I'm sure here in the, um, everyone here in the room have learned a lot on this topic. And now, if you would have allow me, uh, I would like to restate some uh, few points that I have learned during the discussion. First, Professor Daot gave an overview on the indigenous peoples in the Philippines, which he described in his lecture as the first peoples, Aboriginal or native peoples also known as Lumads, who are from ethnic groups and are native to a particular place on earth. He also presented the status report on the state of the indigenous peoples by the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. IPs are among the poorest and most disadvantaged peoples and one third of the world's poorest people. And also IPs have been subject to historical discrimination and marginalization from political processes and economic benefit. Under the Republic Act 8371 of 1997, also known as the Indigenous Peoples Rights Act, it is an act to recognize, protect and promote the right of IPs to manage their ancestral domains and has become the cornerstone of current national policy and IPs. The sports and games of the indigenous peoples are a significant part of their history, reflecting who and what they are. It is part of the cultural heritage of IPs handed down from generation to generation. More than just physical activities for fun and participation, IP games and sports are traditional activities for cultural expression and mutual comprehension. It is a means to convey unity peace building and cultural awareness. Under the Philippine in, uh, Indigenous Games Preservation Act of 2017, it tasked the National Commission for Culture and the Arts and the Department of Education to take the initiative in preserving and promoting indigenous games in the country to ensure that future generations of Filipinos can still enjoy them. And with the passing of this act, it will ensure that the continuity of IP games and sports from generation to generation. Mae enjoy pa rin po ng ating young generation itong uh, cultural tradition or traditional games po ng ating mga IPs. Also, Professor Daud also presented the P's on how we can protect them. The first P is the preservation. Under preservation, uh, by means of documentation, research, collection of equipment and materials and establishment of uh, centers and museums, wikis. Also the most important or one of the uh, important uh, point here is the promotion. Of course, uh, as what we are doing here in the Philippine Sports Commission, we have the annual Philippine sports uh, or indigenous sports and games for under the office of Commissioner Charles Raymond Maxi. So talagang celebrate po natin and it is our way to preserve and promote po itong mga traditional sports and games po ng ating mga IPs. Also, 
yung media po, malaking factor po ang naitutulong po na to, especially sa pagpapalagana po ng mabuting balita, no? yung news releases po, yung mga articles and videos po, uh, it could really help po and uh, uh, the future generation or the young generation can still relate po doon sa traditional uh, culture, traditional sports and games po ng ating mga IPs. Ren and the youth to actively participate be aware of their cultural heritage and appreciate its significance to their cultural identity. So part or one way po na talagang pinopromote po natin itong mga indigenous games, sports and games po, itong mga ganitong summit. And also Prof. Henry also proposed the National Indigenous Talent Identification Program, a program that is designed to provide opportunity for indigenous youths to be ideal and become champions, not only in sport, but in life. Lastly, Prof. Henry believed that it is about for indigenous peoples to be given the opportunity to make significant difference in their lives and in the world through sports. IPs are part of our rich cultural history and we cannot change that. Let us work together so we can develop a unified and more stable sports program. We can promote unity and build peace in Philippine sports. Together, we can make all this possible. So that's it. Back to you, Joash. Thank you, Ms. Arian. I hope uh, everybody nakatch na, na, na po yung ating uh, very, very uh, comprehensive din ating synthesis. And uh, babalik later si Ms. Arian together with our guest speakers. Send in your questions to our facilitator 1 and 2. For later po, we can read through your questions. Go ahead, Arian. Thank you. Yes, for our first live question, Professor Henry, yes. we have um, from Emilio Aguinaldo College, Sir Richard Liave. Hello, Sir Richard. Good afternoon. Good afternoon po. Uh, sir, tanong ko lang po. Kanino po, uh, kasi sa po namin, we include indigenous uh, games. So, para po kay Sir, Pwede po ba kaming humingin ng uh, uh, instructional video yung po ng mga indigenous games na dito sa Pilipinas nang sa ganun may turo po namin ano talaga yung totoo ano talaga yung tama Yeah uh, thank you very much uh, Sir Richard ano I think the universities and the schools will really play a significant role in the preservation promotion and propagation and not many are documented actually uh, the one that we do like the philippine games that the elementary schools and high schools i think are are having as part of their physical activities are common activities like sack race kadang kadang and uh yung mga tinatawag na traditional but actually it's not more of a traditional because some cultures actually will have a different way of performing it. But uh, at least it is a beginning. Uh, what we can do is in the Philippines, ngayon, um, PSC is coming up with a contest ng uh, presentation of a traditional sports and games that they will have to uh, video it. That means from the way it is played on everything so that it can become part of a reference on how it is taught and how it is really played. So yun ang kulang natin. And I think we are lacking in references in terms of documents that will really uh, identify yung process ng bawat games. I'm sure si Sir Carlo Pates ng Commissioner uh, Charles Maxi's office uh, already have a collection of a lot of games from all the regions that we have visited. And hopefully, if they, will, uh, they are able to produce it into a handbook, maybe we can make use of it as part of the reference that you can access. But for now, we rely only on those already written in terms of what we have in the books, sa Department of Education, and I think some researches are being conducted on that, but no publication has been made. So we need really to uh, strengthen and ensure that more documents, more write-ups are made about traditional sports and games so that we can really incorporate it in our instruction. Kasi baka mamaya, tinuturo natin, pero hindi naman pala pareho. Magkaiba. That's why, kung minsan, 
some traditional games are changed just to fit into the setting. And we don't want that the authenticity of the culture and tradition is changed for the sake of commercialization, popularity among others. So I think uh, it's uh, a challenge to physical educators to really come up with researches and documentation that will provide us with references for our future use in physical education and teaching. So I am very happy that you are interested. Uh, you can ca contact Sir Carlo Patis, Office of the Commis uh, Commissioner Charles Maxi, because he already collected, uh, I think, more than hundreds of traditional sports and games from Luzon to Mindanao. And I know he will be too happy to share it. And I was thinking that Commissioner Charles Maxi will come up with a handbook for that as a, an output of the program so that it can be shared to many schools and many communities. I hope I answered your inquiry. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Sir Richard. And of course, our next live um, question will be coming from Philippine Bowling Federation, Sir Reynaldo Reyes. Welcome po to the program. Hello. Uh, good afternoon po, Sir uh, Professor, uh, Professor Henry Daud. Um, yung pong sa discussion nyo is well covered po for our uh, indigenous brothers. Uh, yung pong having practice po kasi uh, their, their uh, games and sporting activities uh, I am very much positive po na they have natural athletic abilities. Now also in, in the later part of your discussion po, uh, you have mentioned about uh, some, some uh, programs. Now ang question ko po is, uh, are there already or what are the programs or have we started these programs which are already in place to identify talents po among our indigenous brothers that may adapt them through the different national sports association uh, to showcase their skills and participate as well in Olympic sports. Thank you very much po, Professor. Thank you very much, uh, Coach, for your question. Uh, as, as to... As to the programs of the PSC through the PSI, we already implemented the SMART ID or the talent identification. Uh, this is conducted in different regions, especially when we do children's games. However, there are very few participants coming from the IP communities. And that is one very big uh, problem we need to overcome. Uh, we need to attract more IP games. So we already have, I think, the of Professor Joy Reyes of MSAS, a Smart Train the Trainers program. Uh, we have already data gathered in terms of the uh, physical uh, measurements of height, uh, arm span, etc., as well as the performance skills that are used for talent identification. We are just waiting for the purchase of the program so that we can put the data so that it can be analyzed as to what sport its kid can be possibly trained and developed to become a, an elite. So yun na lang ang kulang, but we already started. What I'm saying is when I propose the need for national uh, indigenous talent program identification, because we need to come up with a program that the kids will not be afraid or will not fear that they will be discriminated. So para bang kailangan muna natin silang, sila lang muna. Kasi kung isasama natin sila sa mainstream kids, most likely they will be uh, ano eh, mahihiya, matatakot, etc. So if we design a program that is focused on them specifically, baka mas maraming lalabas kasi magiging part ng competition, magiging part ng challenge nila, baka may chance sila, mag improve yung kanilang buhay kasi magkakaroon ng mga development in terms of support, in terms of training that we know they have potential. In fact, in many countries, especially African countries, they utilize IPs to produce world champions and Olympic champions. 
Just imagine the running from the lowland to the top of the mountain provides you with strength, endurance, and other things that is not available among our kids in the city. So we are not tapping a rich potential for success as sports because we don't go there or we don't include them. So I think it's high time, siguro, na NSA should go beyond the four corners of their offices or comfort zone and extend beyond the challenge of finding talents in the, the wilderness. Parang ganun. And PSI will be too happy to assist them because we have people who are experts in measurement, in evaluation that can conduct what we want. The NSAs is for them to set may mga data kasi eh. Ano ba ang physical qualities ng isang bowler champion? Maraming pwedeng sabihin. Dapat ba matangkad? Dapat ba mataas ang kamay? Etc. And you know that uh, if you have tested. So we learn to become more scientific in talent identification. And PSI is very much happy to support any talent identification program. And that is why PSE Chairman Ramirez is so happy to come up with partnership between CHED, between LGU, and POC, and DepEd. Because this is only the, re the, the means wherein we can truly come up with one unified way of talent identification and development. So uh, I hope you are uh, uh, supportive of programs that will identify future talents in sports. Kahit hindi marunong mag-bowling yung mga taga-bundok, but the qualities present in their physical and their mental, we can translate it when we identify them, most likely they will develop also. Yung mga gymnastics, yung mga swimming, yung running, jumping, andun sa bundok yung maraming talent. Huwag nating hintayin na may magsulpot na isang champion sa palaro, tapos sabihin natin talent ID na kaagad. Hanapin natin sila because they're just waiting and we, they have been waiting for too long. I hope I have, I have answered your query, sir. Opo, 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 professor and uh, we hope po na uh, your program will will be fully supported by our government po. Thank you po. Thank you sir Reynaldo. Our next question will be coming from the from Davao. Mr. Nel John Asadillo of the Muay Thai Association of the Philippines. Good afternoon sir Nel. Welcome to the program. Thank you sir kasi I also a uh, believer in a uh, you know, the indigenous people are really uh, potential athletes kasi bata pa lang, sanay sa hirap, sanay sa trabaho, yeah. sanay tumakbo ng bundok. Um, <clears throat> even pupunta ko dyan sa PSC, sa Manila, sa Luzon, maraming mga bisaya. <laughs> maraming mga taga Mindanao. <laughs> because dito maraming mga bundok-bundok pa rin. Uh, by the way, uh, sa Muay Thai po ako, uh, kahit kami, totoo yun, na really, na uh, lalo na combat sport, marami talaga malakas uh, from Mindanao kasi mga indigenous people. Uh, pero ano rin po, na-mention nyo kanina about sa sa ARNIS na national sports natin. Kasi sa heart plan talaga kasi ay nakatrain ako ng Thailand, eh, pumunta ako ng Thailand and I saw how intentional they are with promoting Muay Thai. Pagdating mo pa lang doon sa airport, tanungin ka, ka pa ng driver ng taxi. Are you here for Muay Thai? Tapos pag sabihin mo, oh, dalahin ka sa sa isang Muay Thai camp, tapos meron pa silang tip galing doon sa gym. Kumbaga, tapos pagpunta mo sa mga marketplace, may mga, may mga Muay Thai short, may mga boxing gloves. Kumbaga, parang connected sa Thailand yung sport nila. So, meron po ba tayong program niyan sa INIS? Kasi national sport natin, Filipino tayo, di ba? Kasi doon meron, silang, meron silang Muay Thai University. Uh, yung isang naging teacher ko kasi, meron talaga silang certification that they are certified by the country to, rep, to, to teach the world the culture of Thailand and also the sports of Muay Thai. Parang ganon. Parang masyadong intentional yung kanilang pag-educate sa mga tao na yun. So, meron ba tayong plan for Philippines na ganyan? Na talagang gawing intentional yung pag promote ng INIS. Uh, kasi I believe na yung mga kaibigan ko na magaling mag-ARNIS na sa ibang bansa na eh. Tapos nagtuturo doon. Parang, uh, and, and, and kasi dito hindi masyadong na-relax. So yun lang po, mayroon ba tayong program on that na gawin talagang in partnership with City Tourism, with sports, kanon yung ARNIS po. As a national sports po natin. Sariling atin po yun. 
Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, actually, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Muay Thai Association of the Philippines for the inclusion of Muay Thai in the Olympics. And I think the association worked hard to uh, gain acceptance into the Olympic sporting body. And that's a very big thing. As to the issue on the Arnis, we need to consider the association uh, in terms of what they intend to envision for our national sports. We already have gained access to internationalization of Arnis with the inclusion of SASE Games. Uh, one way to promote it is really correct po kayo, magkaroon po tayo ng parang Arnis Academy para continuous yung development. Uh, development of teachers for our knees, coaches for our knees, and uh, grassroots program for our knees. But that is within the range of uh, responsibility ng NSA po. Uh, PSC is just here to support whatever program for sports development. Uh, the initiative should come from the NSA or the association that promotes our national sports. And I think uh, this is a very good uh, project that the ARNIS can uh, have. Bawat region may ARNIS na, na camp or academy, may national academy of ARNIS to continuously develop and promote our national sports. So for now, ang PSE po, walang masasabi na kami ba dapat? Kasi po, nasa domain po yan ng POC at saka ng NSAs. PSC can only extend support, assistance in terms of the needs. But as to the program, we are actually challenging NSAs to come up with sports development program on their own. Okay, thank you, Sir Nell. Our next live question will be coming from DepEd Butuan City, Christopher Hamer. Welcome to the program. Good afternoon, po. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Professor Henry Dow. Uh, thank you, po. From Butuan City. Uh, just two, two, two issues po na gusto kong erase in DepEd sports activity. At the same time, I'm going to have my follow-up question po. The two, the two issues that we are facing uh, as we deal with this indigenous people, ganito po. We understand po that in terms of giving opportunity for sports, para sa mga IP, the, the, the big avenue is the DepEd po talaga. Because we were, we were the ones, mamana may first hand, hand experience to be with them going to the mountainous area. And reality we're going to tell us, I will go with the same idea and principle with these other coaches na nandito na maganda talagang kumuha ng mga atlete na mga IT uh, from those mount coming from mountainous area. I don't have to spend much of my time or spending, spending using sport training program kasi yung mga bata train ay from the, from the time. Well, well developed yung mga cardio nila, yung muscles nila, the discipline is also there already. Kaya lang po, sir, uh, it is frustrating to, to know that in some DepEd sports activity, ganito po ang nangyayari. We were able to discover very potential and talented IP. However, ang pinaka-common na problem namin, sir, when we go to papers, this, this IP people were not registered to NSO or PSA. Nangihinayang kami, sir, hindi sila makasali for higher competition because of disqualification that they really have to secure PSA or NSO. Although we are promoting an equal opportunity for sports for them uh, in this in this common uh, ano, common uh, common ground sport pagtagiging sport enthusiast natin. Second po na question na, na ano namin sir na issue is the yung mga parents ng mga IP has a regionalistic attitude, territorial attitude. And they are not willing, some of them, not all naman po talaga, some of them, the unwillingness of their parents that they will go for, for several days or weeks, they will be parted from their place. The parents will not allow them to part. Oh. And then it becomes another problem for us, although we are so willing to give our effort, our time, our energy as sports educators in depth ed, uh, willing to... to Kung pwede lang, hatid sundo. But there are really some instances like this. So we give them the all equal opportunity. But again, the first problem is, sayang naman yung NSO and PSO problem natin. At saka yung, yung unwillingness ng mga parents para ibigay for training purposes yung kanilang mga kids. Uh, what can we do, sir, 
to promote uh, the desire that these people will find hope in sports para sa mga IP po natin, sir. Thank you po. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Christopher. No? Very timely that uh, a question from DepEd is uh, raised. I believe that DepEd is the key to talent identification of the indigenous people because you are reaching the mountains in terms of the schools that you are establishing. In fact, I am adopting a school in Talaingod in kilometer 23. That's on the top of the mountain, actually, in Davao del Norte. And they have a lot of potential for sports. Now, your first question as to uh, birth certificate, I think DepEd can ensure that when they start grade one, the requirement is already uh, accomplished. That means there should be a process wherein a campaign for registering for the birth certificate in the community should be strengthened. Wag nating hintayin na napili na sa kapahahanapan. Pagdating ng grade 1, dapat kumpleto na yung papers, may birth certificate na. That means before they enroll, they could have been given opportunities to gain access to records or documents. Huwag po natin hintayin na nakapag-aral na, tapos napili na, eh hindi pala pwede kasi walang record. Yes. So from the time they start grade 1, dapat may birth certificate na lahat ng IPs as a part of requirement. So DepEd can coordinate with an office, statistics ba yan, or NSO ba yan, so that they will be given as such. Second, matters of training and bringing out kids. Hindi po lang dahil coach tayo na train natin, eh hihilahin na natin kaagad. We need to partner with the community and the parents, make them understand on the value of the participation of their children, what benefits they will get, and it will help them understand that the opportunity for their children to reach a certain level of success is higher if they allow. So, meron ba kayong ginagawang visitation? Meron ba kayong ginagawang uh, communication with the parents to explain pag naging athlete ang anak mo, etong mangyayari sa kanya, etong magagawa ng program na ito, etong mapupuntahan niya, at itong magiging future niya. Most likely, if parents understood all these things, they are too happy to support. Padalhan pa kayo ng mga mais at saka mga kamuting kahoy. Okay, so uh, it's just a matter of processing a certain steps to follow. That means certificate pa grade 1, dapat meron na. So pagdating ng grade 4 or grade 6, talagang hindi ka na magproblema. Second, communication with the parents, dapat may partnership. Dapat athletes, coaches should have a close partnership with the parents because yung parents permit, yung ano. But before all these things, you should have an explanation on why your sports program can help their kids and in what way and make them be assured that your their kids will be taken care of unless they are assured of the protection and safety of their kids then they will not trust anybody and give their kids to anybody so mm -hmm. ganun lang siguro kasi uh, kailangan talaga natin we communicate the program make them understand and buy in it. That means, oy, baka mapareha ito kay Manny Pacquiao pag naging champion, hindi na kami magbubungkal ng mga kamuting kahoy sa bundok. Kasi nga, may potential. Okay? As I was saying, if only NSAs can come up with a program to attract, maraming mga bata sa slums na gustong makipagbasaga ng mukha, I-train natin yun kasi hindi nyo matakot masaktan. Huwag natin hintayin na may nag-champion lang dyan na isa tapos yun lang gagawin natin. Sa diving, maraming nagda-dive na mga bata doon sa pantalan. Ay, group mo yun sila, bigyan mo yun ng konting training, ipakompete mo, and kukunin mo na uh, talent development po yung magaganda, and then provide incentives for their families. What is one sack of rice? They will not dive for one peso sa mga barko, but they can swim the whole day. So, endurance sa swimming, nandiyan na. Eh, yung iba, magpapalaps-laps ka pa dyan bago ma-develop endurance. Yung mga, mga bad jaws na lumalangoy sa pantalan, you, you let them stay for the whole night and whole day, they will be happy. So, endurance, uh, etc. So, maraming pwedeng gawin. And if only we try to plan something, like sa inyo po, kailangan lang may campaign kayo para lahat ng mga IP communities will have the desire to register their children para may record. Okay? 
Then grade 1, ready na na may talagang required na may certificate. Then you will have less problem as you go on. Second, you need to partner with the community, the parents, so that they will understand what the program is all about, what benefits it will give their children and to their family, what future they will have in the sports that they will enter, and what safety assurances can you give na hindi yan sila mapapariwara or whatever. So siguro those are little things that DepEd can do. Marami namang access kayo sa NSO, sa kung ano-ano dyan. And I think it's important that we recognize na tama ka, hindi na natin kailangan i-develop ang endurance. Kasi imagine running from the top of the mountain down to the hill to buy a toyo and then go back, di ba? So sa araw-araw na lakad at takbo nila, you already have potentials in running, in jumping, and other sports. So I think it's a challenge that we go beyond the comfort zone of where we are to reach out to the underprivileged but with high potentials. Yun lang po ang pwede kong masyad. There you have it. Uh, I think nag-thumbs up na si Sir Christopher, no? And nag-heart react na siya. And uh, I think that signifies na... Uh, na Nasagot talaga ng ating guest speaker ang kanilang inquiries. Maraming maraming salamat po sa mga participants natin who really actively participated. And also for everyone who sent in your questions. Thank you also sa ating moderator, si Ms. Aaron Mariare, who led our, uh, who led our discussion for the open forum. And uh, there you have it. Uh, as mentioned po, no, we are really bound by time restrictions. <laughs> but we know that everyone here uh, still has a lot of questions to be answered Do I know uh, most of our participants here can reach out to our guest speaker and he's very open to answer further inquiries And uh, but, but as you know for those questions that will not be answered all of it will be included po sa ating data processing kaya po wala pong data that will be wasted and everything will be turned over to our research yung research po na yun malapit na no? going into our phase 2 of the summit we will now take this time to honor and award the certificate of appreciation to our 18th speaker for the Sports Conversations 2021 and to award the certificate may I call on again our uh, PSC Commissioner Charles Raymond Maxi Com. Uh, before that, uh, let me uh, express uh, our gratitude to Professor Henry Daot for sharing your time this afternoon po and imparting your knowledge to our participants. And of course, to our participants for, for your patience, uh, for, for taking part to our program uh, in the, with this uh, National Sports Summit. Maraming salamat sa inyo. Uh, Ang aming programa po sa PSC ay hindi, hindi magsasucceed without our participants, our stakeholders. So, uh, this Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Professor Henry Daot for his invaluable contribution as a resource speaker for the sports and our Indigenous People Session of Sports Conversations, the first phase of the National Sports Summit 2021. Given the 16th day of June, 2021 via Zoom. Signed, William I. Ramirez, Chairman, Philippine Sports Commission. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you.